Hello and welcome. Today is February 7th. This is the KCP community meeting. If this is your first time joining, welcome. Uh, we have a community meeting agenda issue in GitHub, which is what I'm sharing on the screen right now. F please feel free to come in and add comments for additional meeting uh, agenda items if you're interested. And uh, we do try to use raise hand in Google Meet. So while we're going through things, if you have something you'd like to say, please hit the raise hand button and I will moderate today. So uh, I suppose given that I just created this, oh, we already got some stuff. So awesome to see that. Um, Sergius, I will turn it over to you for your first item in the agenda today. All right, okay. So let me share my screen if I can. So present it a little something. Mm -hmm. Boop. Let's take a window. Here we are. So, can you see my screen? <clears throat> Looks good. Okay. So I've been experimenting a little bit, not too much, but just a little um, to have, uh, or to experiment with the idea how we can get KCP a little bit easier installed for people. So can they can just try it out. I mean, trying it out is pretty um, a low hanging fruit. You just uh, clone the repository, do make build, and just do KCP start. However, it would be nice to um, have like a you know one click installation story. Um, there is work ongoing to reactivate the Helm charts and get them going. I think this is a nose foundation we can piggyback on. So um, my thinking was well, we can do like a little bit of a step two and. Um, bring KCP also in by other channels, not only, you know, by cloning the repository or by installing Humtroids, but obviously, like, at least for OpenShift, the most lowest hanging fruit is just use OLM. And, um, yeah, if you have, um, like, the console here, just, you know, go on operator hub, just search for KCP, um, like here in, in OpenShift, and just have it installed. Oh, I have no logo yet for my, for my demo. Okay, that's fine. Um, and that is sort of like the um, the pitch of the Stroman proposal um, to have an installation method by OLM. Uh, the goal is to avoid redundancy. So I would like really, really, for the sake of you know reducing the maintainership burden, um, have as much as additional manifest as possible. So um, the idea was to reuse the existing Helm threads that we are currently reactivating, and the operator SDK. Um, offers a method, um, they call it the Helm operator, to um, yeah, create a, a bundle, an OLM bundle, um, which essentially you know, bundles Helm and executes things um, um, based on existing Helm charts. So um, the experience would look like this. You um, install an operator, a KCP operator. Um, and that KCP operator would act on um, <laughs> KCP CRDs. And that KCP or CRD, if you see here, is essentially nothing more and nothing less than an instance of Helm variables that you would usually create uh, on your command line to create a Helm installation. So every Helm variable that we are offering in our Helm charts um, can be denoted here um, in, in the CRD. Stefan. We talked about that in Slack. I would love to see a controller making sure the sync target is in place and the syncer is running on the local cluster. Yeah, agreed. So basically to, to get TMC into front of users to learn yes. about it. Yes, precisely. Um, yeah, the, the, the basic idea would be here to create an additional deployment in the hand charts themselves, um, right? And any parameterization would go via this CRD. Um, that is done here. So essentially, if we can bring this additional controller in the hand charts, then you know this will ju just be proxy to the OLM installation. Um, just a little bit of a high-level overview because like this whole <laughs> OLM thing is completely new to me, to be honest. I've been usually sitting in um, you know a little bit lower level systems so far. Um, essentially, how it is being done is um, there is a Helm operator that's um, that's part of the so-called operator SDK. It's a little component that reconciles 
a CRD that you um, provide as part of your OLM bundle. And as you see here, uh, for the ones that, you know, <laughs> the operator SDK generator creates something that has preserved unknown fields true, which is not nice. So essentially what we could obviously do in this CRD is to spell out all the um, Helm variables um, um, that, that we offer in the installation. Um, and um, based on the CRD, the Helm operator uh, reconciles alongside with the existing Helm chart that we provide. Um, yeah, that's the current the, the pull request here. KCD def Helm charts reconciles using the existing Helm charts. Um, a yeah, Helm operator deployment, and that one creates you know all the necessary bits that are um, necessary for KCP to run. What is nice about this thing, as I just mentioned, you can override. Um, and you essentially also need to create a KCP custom resource um, before KCP itself is being deployed. So you can tweak your settings and have things like TMC turned on or like, I don't know, an, a route created or not. Um, but the end result looks a little bit like this, that at the end of the day, um, what we have in the Helm charts now, the Helm operator would create some etcd instances, um, would create um, the KCP front proxy and what other uh, op little control components we need to do additional reconciliation and um, additional initialization. Um, what do we need to do? Uh, well, we need to create a new repository, unfortunately. Um, you know, I just created one here in my, um, under my name, kcp-olm. And essentially what this thing is, it's, you know, like a little bit of a boilerplate around the Helm chart. Currently, I merged the Helm chart uh, in tree of this bundle. This could be out of tree, um, just because we have a working version and that bundle would essentially create um, contain um, a little bit of metadata, would create a CRD. Uh, it would contain the CRD declaration that I just mentioned. That's the, yeah, that's the custom resource definition. And except of version bumps, Famous last words, I don't see much additional maintainership being done here. Most of the work is being done in the, the hand tries themselves. Um, but yeah, if we want to go this route with offering hand tries via OLM, um, via the helm operator to have a nicer OLM installation story, we do need a little bit um, of a project. So that would be um, on us to create and a little bit of maintainership in terms of versions, bumps, and image references, I guess. Um, yeah, that would be it from my side. Any questions? Frederick. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, and the, the aim of this will uh, may, maybe to increase the visibility of uh, KCP uh, for a, a larger community. So in this case, uh, OpenShift, we, we can publish uh, uh, this bundle in uh, the OpenShift catalog, uh, community catalog. And um, we could also consider uh, there, there is an uh, artifact app.io. We, we could uh, also uh, publish uh, the M charts there. Yeah. Do you think uh, that would make sense? And uh, at the end of the day, it's not production development, but just to, to get people uh, having uh, hands on uh, KCP uh, and trying it in three minutes. Yes, precisely. I, I would say so. This is, you know, like, like this is something that we should discuss. Like, how we, how do we frame this on our installation, right? Obviously, it's for for me the the motivation was just have something to give people at hand so they can, you know, um, try things out quickly for workspaces. Another use case which I think Stefan mentioned would be awesome to have is the TMC stuff and the synchro stuff. That because that's going to be a pretty common use case. Um, so, yeah. So I would say as a first step, just have something like a hell. Hello world KCP <laughs> deployment uh, with some, you know, additional nice batteries. And then later on, we can see what, what goes from here. By the way, maybe it could be also an option to have, you know, after your main KCP CRD to also have a, a sinker or sync target CRD, you know, something that mainly uh, just drives you to, you know, um, a secondary uh, CRD that that allows adding sync targets inside the, the the host server, something like that. I mean, it could be done step by step as well. 
not sure this one could be managed through Helm, though, but there is also the option of, of you know, Go. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, Sergius, do you want to transfer the repo to the KCP dev org? Yes, I would like to um, essentially, like, it's, it's a little bit shaky first, so I would like to finalize, um, you know, <laughs> the thing currently, like, I have some a little bit of a hiccups of, with variables, and I wanted to have a shortcut with Frederick as well. Well, he wanted to contribute, and I, I would say once we have something that, you know, just works, trademark, then uh, I would say let's transfer it. And uh, the other prerequisite, I would say, um, is shortest PR. Uh, in the hand shots repo because yeah. I need that one. Um, and as soon as you know things converged against stability a little bit in the next days, I'm totally fine with creating. Um, so there. in terms of the Helm chart PR, if you have reviewed it and it's LGTM, like we'll just go ahead and approve it. So. Yep. I, I yeah I've been working last week with Charlie on that one. I reviewed it already. Yes. Okay. Just let us know. Thanks. All right. Mike, you have the next couple of topics, so over to you. Okay, sure. Um, hopefully they're minor. Um, first one is just to update. I uh, wanted to un understand where we are and where we're still expecting to go in terms of versioning the documentation. I see now if you go to the kcp.io documentation site, the releases menu now has two entries, main and v0.10.0. Technically, main isn't a release, but I suppose that's not much of a big deal. Um, if I pick the v0.10.0, however, it tells me there's no content. Yeah, um, still on my to-do list, and I know Avanal had been helping out as well, so much appreciated there. Uh, I got sidetracked by a pretty nasty watch cache storage bug, uh, so I will get back to that as soon as I can. So the idea is basically what we've got now goes into v0.10.0, and the main gets updated to be current. Is that right? Yeah, it would track whatever's in the branches. Right, right. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. That's that for that item, unless other people have other things to say. Uh, I'd say just keep going. <laughs> All right. Then my other item was about IDEs and Go workspaces. Um, I'm kind of curious as to what other people are doing. I tried to do something that I thought would be fairly obvious last week, but it ran into several problems, so I drew the conclusion that people aren't doing it. So I'm kind of curious. What I tried to do was make a Go workspace that let me um, look at both KCP and KCP's fork of Kubernetes and Edge MC also. Um, I think the Edge MC wasn't really the problem. The problems are coming from KCP and its fork of Kubernetes. Um, there are a bunch of uh, things that my IDE complained about. I, I've, I've been using Visual Studio Code, um, and I tried to point you know, create that Go workspace, point Visual Studio Code at it, and had several problems. So my question is, what are people? What do other people do? You know, and and kind of more forward looking. You know, what should be supported, and what should we expect to work? Uh, so I, I can tell you my workflow and setup. Um, so I tend to use um, so I use GoLand. And I have one project that is all the KCP repositories. And if I need to be working on Kubernetes as well, I have that in a different project. And if I'm trying to run KCP on my laptop with changes to Kubernetes, then I run a sed script to update my Go mod so that all of the replace statements that you see in uh, this way, uh, so that all the replace statements that are down here all the way at the bottom for all the kates.io are, are just relative links to, uh, to files on my laptop. And that tends to work pretty well for me. I tried going the go workspace route but you have to issue replace statements for for all of these in the workspace or in the go.work file as well yeah, which that's one I thing i discovered feel like doing <laughs> if it were only that i could tolerate that because that's a relatively fixed thing but um continue. maybe sorry uh i'm using uh 
VS Code. And you have um, just an example, maybe in KCP contrib, KCP that code workspace. Um, mainly, I have two folders. If we look into this file, uh, if you can. Yeah, two folders. And oh, uh, once again, exactly like Andy said, it depends on, you know, having the Kubernetes um, fork of, of I mean, the, the KCP fork of KCP be at the right place. So uh, as you can see here, there, there is the three uh, back. So mainly at the right place uh, in your Go source, um, the right relative place. And once you have that, it's quite uh, easy to to manage that with a you know workspace with two sub projects uh, in VS Code, and then to switch between using uh, the Kubernetes uh, as you know normal imports or or the Kubernetes um, which is you know that you have locally, uh, you can just use also this uh, script which is in Contrib uh, local dev. Uh, local dev .sh. This does the switch and mainly changes everything in your Go mode uh, to use this, um, you know, uh, local Kubernetes installer at the right place. At least that works okay. for me. Okay. Maybe a relevant factor here, um, and this may be a bit of a VS Code foo, um, is I know when I open something in VS Code, I have to tell it whether I trust it or not. Um, I've been telling it for Kubernetes, actually for everything I don't write, actually for everything that imports a bunch of stuff, I say that I don't trust it because I don't trust all the things that it imports. Um, and that makes it kind of crippled. So right, right. The, the thing that set me off on this is when I'm working on KCP, all right, the def, a reference to something in, in, in its fork of Kubernetes, I can follow the, from the use to the definition, follow the, from the use in KCP to the definition in its Kubernetes fork. But then if I want to follow from a use in the Kubernetes fork to a definition in Kubernetes fork, that doesn't work. Um, so first, just a factual question here. When I tell um, VS Code uh, that I trust something, Am I or am I not telling it that I trust everything it imports? That I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, 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 that's a good question. Uh, it's probably something we could Google. Uh, let's pause on that for just a second. I know Daniel has his hand up. So, uh, Daniel? Yeah, I was just going to uh, mention kind of like a, a slightly different uh, uh, perspective when you're trying to import all this as well if you're trying to use KCP as a library in another project um, being able to find all of the right uh, import replaces is is pretty challenging especially when you already have um, a lot of the upstream dependencies uh, you know I think one area where uh, this particularly came up recently was with some of like the logical cluster v2 to logical cluster v3 stuff um, and just kind of like when that was updated in the API machinery, the KCP API machinery repo, um, the Kubernetes fork, um, and then the controller runtime fork. Um, so I wonder if there is like, uh, this is only sort of somewhat tangential to what we're talking about here, but if there is like a, uh, a canonical place where we could, you know, test to make sure that third parties that are like consuming uh, KCP in a different repository, if they can point to it, Maybe it's the controller runtime example. That's not actually using um, KCP as a library, right? It's just a controller that runs against KCP. Um, but if that is something that other folks are trying to do as well, uh, I'm happy to contribute some of my my pain to, to make a repo that makes that a little easier. Yeah, it's definitely a goal. Uh, we're just we're not there yet. We're on the road to it. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Stefan. That make sure library. Um, usage that this pattern keeps working. I think it's helpful. So either inside of KCP, but then the Go mod problem is not solved, right? Um, maybe even a different repository in, inside of KCP dev, which renders KCP, and if we can get CI somehow test that, um, anything along those lines would be very good, I think. Yeah. Um, so Mike, back to your issue in question. Um, maybe it would be worthwhile to try and find some other folks who 
for using VS Code and working on KCP and Kubernetes together and just kind of have a little hacking session to uh, like you could screen share and show what you're trying to do and, and folks could try and help out maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will leave that to you to try and um, see some folks and, and get that organized. I know David, you said you use VS Code. Um, maybe post in Slack and see if you can get some other people to um, chime in and then you all can self-organize. Very good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, any other thoughts on this topic before we move on to the next one? Right. So just want to say, um, so some of us, some of us uh, met uh, last week and we talked about uh, workspace initialization. Uh, and then we came up with this drawing uh, that Stefan drew, basically. I'm not going to try to explain uh, this drawing. If Stefan wants to do it, feel free. Uh, but uh, then the next step is to turn this into like a, a proposal, right? So I need to digest it and... and Can you give some background on um, what you're trying to do here? Yeah, so probably I should uh, open an issue, like an epic. Uh, that was the scenario I shared on Slack. Maybe you have it in the uh, previous community meeting. Um, that was the scenario where uh, you have a, a workspace exporting uh, API, like Kafka API, and then when creating uh, or binding, so creating a new workspace, binding to the uh, to the Kafka workspace, then the the service provider uh, wants to create a secret in the uh, in the user workspace. That's basically okay. the scenario. Got it. There's more to it, uh, but that's the initial uh, scenario. This one. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely think an issue of some sort uh, is worth having. Stefan, was there anything you wanted to say about this now, or just? To hold off until later. I would hold off, I think. Okay. So, uh, yeah, if you can create a GitHub issue for your use case, I think that would be a good starting point. Would do. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other things in here. Anybody have any additional topics? If not, uh, I'm going to take a look at our new issues that need to be looked at. Uh, all right, so the first one here is something about resource name and GPR. I can explain if required. Um, sure, go ahead. This is Kasturi here. Um, so uh, when when we try to run the workload sync command using hyphen hyphen resources uh, with just the resource name, like for example, if you take route, if you just do a hyphen hyphen resources and then route um, and try to uh, sync that resource to the physical cluster, uh, we always get errors saying that uh, uh, there is a SAR check that is being failed. Instead, if we use the group and version does this route dot routes dot route dot open shift dot io then everything works fine and we don't see any such error okay so that is I it swear we had a similar issue for this that i think i filed uh, let me see if i can find it real quick no oh, maybe not uh, go ahead, David. No, um, my um, understanding of this is that obviously, in during the API import mechanism, um, the, we are not strict, strict enough. In fact, and you know, as soon as it finds a, a GVR that seems to correspond to what is requested, uh, either by singular name or plural name, then it takes it. But the problem is that now we we require additional you know permissions downstream uh, and those permissions then are put on the wrong name so it seems that we we have to you know be much more strict when when importing resources and, and always use the full 
name with the group and version. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we do have this issue that's, um, you know, Kasturi filed as well, that I remember talking to, to her about this back in so May last year. Possibly. And this may be old, um, but so David, I'm going to assign this to you and you can yeah. delegate if you'd like. Um, sure. And then I'm also. Yeah, let's put that in backlog. And, and then I'm going to just provide a link to 1050, possibly related. Yeah, because that, that doesn't seem highly critical, but still it yeah. makes harder to understand the, the reason of the error. All right, next up is option to create a namespace in the workload cluster with the same name as it is in the KCP workspace. I don't think we're going to do this, but um, we, because we, we had a, a feature request to be able to set this in the past, um, but if there's some way that, uh, you know, this is somebody else asking for it, so maybe we do need to do it. Um, we just want to make sure that we do it in a way that you can't really break things, or if you do break things, you know what you're doing. So, um, David, do you have any thoughts on? The yeah, it seems. I mean, to me, it seems a, a bit like you know the thing, the features requested for Edge, for example. So, really, it's very specific use cases where we would like to disable some of the standard things and standard yeah. mutations that that we are doing in the sinker for. A, Obviously, for security purposes, and then we want to disable such things for you know here you know enable to be able to to you know accommodate uh, a specific namespace for tests. So I'm I'm not very fond of this, at least as a normal feature. Maybe having a sort of you know dedicated way to start the sinker or uh, with an option or you know. Even even have a dedicated binary for things like that. I don't know, but once again, I'd rather keep this as a really special case instead of adding this feature in the normal uh, use cases. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess it can be ignored. Yeah, uh, I mean I have raised that uh, feature request, so I guess uh, it is very specific to our use case, and and that's not a priority. No, uh, I can I can close it. Yeah, is it something that you can work? around or do you envision that you're going to run into this problem um, Actually, fairly uh, frequently i was trying to performance test on kcp like uh, how resources are getting synced using kcp and you know uh, how usually an application runs on a self-managed cluster so in that process i tried to sync some deployments from kcp workspace to my self-managed cluster and during that process i noticed like uh, you know, namespace was issue with our Ansible operator. So later we decided not to, you know, run those benchmarks uh, and try out something different. I mean, to try some different kind of tests to do that. So that's not a big priority you now. Uh, I think it can be ignored, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, if, if you do think in the future that you want this, we're happy to revisit and find a way that, uh, doesn't make this the default, but somehow can enable it for you. Um, so thank you. As discussed in today's meeting, this is not needed at the format. OK. Next up, oh, this is a docs thing. And next. OK, um, this is an interesting one. Oops, I lost it. Uh, resources synced to the workload cluster are deleted and recreated when computer enters sleep mode. David, I'm going to give this one to you to uh, take a look at. Well, I, I don't know about the priority. Obviously, it's not very Actually, high. Actually, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, you know, it might be that. That it's some somehow expected, at least the way it's currently implemented. Because you know, when you shut your, um, when you close your laptop and it starts sleeping, the times the time still goes, flies. Yeah. And so you know, when you open that back, uh, the heartbeat obviously uh, has not been updated. 
So I, that's, you know, we have to think effectively if it's a bug or not. I don't know. Anymore. Yeah, I don't think sleep is a bug. I would think like if you got disconnected and reconnected, like some sort of network split and it did something that we didn't expect, then sure. But yeah, go ahead, Joachim. Well, this is kind of tied to the issue that we need to implement some kind of grace period to mark um, a, a health check as fail, I think. When we start KCP, just starting KCP, we mark everything as fail if they are past the time that they should be. So we should wait for the sinkers to be able to reconnect to KCP and, and update the herbit. Something like, you know, it's something that we can implement, like having a 10 second delay or 20 second delay, depending on the here with time. Yes, if, if there would be something to fix, it might more be at the, at the restart of, of uh, KCP, for example. But there, you know, when you... Uh, yeah, I, I get a, it. A laptop I mean, yeah. uh, falling asleep and then, you know, uh, yeah, we you didn't out of, actually. Of, that, that's a bit, you know, <laughs> quite a strange situation, yes. and, and not sure. You know, initially in um, in in the initial um, issue from from Paolo, uh, there was also uh, obviously uh, the feeling that it was failing when there is a disconnection. But in fact, it was, you know. A wrong failure it was just because the deconnection was uh, only on one side on the sinker and not uh, on the kcp side you know just due to the way uh, uh, the deconnection was was down uh, on the network so in fact in fact the the error with the deconnection is is not there it's it, it works properly so the only thing that that um is still is still not working is is uh, the sleep mode but i'm not sure we we should consider that as you know a bug or at least a critical one. <laughs> yeah, I'm tempted to close it as not a bug or you know KCP's not intended to do this. Um, all right, well I'm going to leave it with you for right now. Sure, sure we might uh, transform it and create a new one uh, yeah. for you know to analyze about the start of of KCP yeah. where this makes sense. Okay, next up, uh, KCP and Compute does not work as expected for locations on a different workspace. Uh, I'm going to let you all take a look as well. Yes, I didn't go deep into this one. It seems it's related to names and the support of, you know, either the logical cluster name or the, uh, you know, path. Yep. You know, any clues from, from Stefan or Jan would be appreciated here as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up is a flake. This is... Yeah, this one we can... Next. Next. This is... Stinker. Uh, if you all need help with this one, let me know. I, I wasn't sure if I should try to deflake Sinker tests or wait until you have some more PRs merge. So what's the order uh, for the things virtual, you're doing? For the virtual workspace, I don't think you well you might maybe wait just a bit because I, I'm going to, to merge up here that, that changed them a bit. But okay. I don't think there is a great impact. Just maybe just avoid you a, a rebase. Uh, I thought I Fix this one. Uh, I think I fixed this one. I'll double check. Uh, okay, derive downstream resources, inherit sinker labels. I'm gonna give this one to y'all to triage. Uh, have you seen this one before? Uh, yes, uh, maybe, I, I don't know if Castori wants to explain, I can do it. In fact, yeah. um, yeah, sorry, go, go on if you want. Yeah, uh, when trying to uh, sync k-native related uh, resources into the physical cluster, 
um i see that the physical cluster is an open shift cluster where i am trying where i have installed kn native and trying to sync some resources from kcp to the physical cluster um i see that open shift is creating some few other resources other than the kn native eventing service which gets synced and the syncer thinks that the resources are being synced from the kcp and it tries to sync it back mm -hmm. and then the logs are flooded with their messages and also the resources that are being uh, coming up in the physical cluster um, has the annotations uh, with respect to the cluster name and the syncer yeah so that that raised an interesting question of you know when you have some controller on the downstream cluster on the physical cluster that many create de derived objects from initial objects that were synced from upstream uh, typically k-native controller here uh, it mainly creates derived objects with the same labels and annotations as the main object so the k-native service uh, will you know give its la labels and and annotations to the cube service and cube deployment and yeah, this I, obviously lies to the sinker so I, I think the issue here is that a uh, a controller or service such as Knative would need to be modified to work against KCP properly, I would imagine. Yes, I think, sure, this type of things will happen when we don't use the typical nominal way, which is, you know, have the higher level objects at the KCP level and yeah. only yeah. think the typical cube uh, uh, resources to KCP, uh, to, to the physical cluster. But on the other hand, it seems to me that it would be still good to fix that, possibly just by checking if the object has an owner reference, because everything mm -hmm. synced directly by KCP doesn't have any owner reference. So that could be a simple way to discriminate and just avoid these type of logs and floating with errors, because of course it, you know, falls into you know the back of mechanisms. Yeah. So that, all right. Uh, well, uh, I've got this in the backlog for you all. Um, sure. It's another not one about not critical combined compute issues. Yeah, this one we have to analyze. Uh, I didn't okay. look in detail. And ah, thank you for filing this, Dan. This is uh are you going to work on this soon, or should I put it in the backlog? Yeah, I'd love to go ahead and just copy over what I have. I, I'm up for uh, discussion around like what we want the example to do. Uh, it could just be like uh, you know something simple like uh, using KCP as a library and like a post start hook that just adds some controller to watch things. I think that could be a, a good starting place. Um, it probably doesn't need to do a whole bunch given that we're really just trying to show off like the yep. how, how to use the various dependencies so all right um thank you for filing that i've got this set up and that is all for triage uh okay so i think we've come to the agenda the end of our agenda for today thank you everybody for joining and participating and we will see you next week have a great rest of your week. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.